everyone, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up and I read so much in the month of March. For obvious reasons, I'm spending a lot more time at home um, and also escaping into a lot of fictional worlds to kind of distract myself from the real world. Because of that, I was able to actually complete seven books this month. Many of them are actually pretty long. I definitely deviated from my TBR as I kind of was focusing on truly just reading to whatever mood I had, whichever sounded fun and entertaining, that is exactly what I picked up. That being said, you might be surprised by some of the books I read this month, especially what I plan to read next month, but that's a video for another day. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in to the video. The first book I completed was The Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second book within the Inheritance trilogy, which I am loving so, so much, and I definitely plan on finishing this trilogy next month. This is just such an interesting take on gods and human interaction. It's definitely a theme within fantasy novels that I'm really enjoying right now, gods and humans and kind of the folly of mankind, but also like the arrogance of an all-knowing being and all of that sort of thing. The sequel kind of takes place shortly after the events of the first one, but follows a different main character. It's set primarily in a city where a bunch of demigods live. And our main character is blind and she is an artisan within this city. She also has this uncanny ability to like sense and see gods and therefore she kind of finds herself in the middle of a lot of different drama. When gods begin to be murdered within this city, she's kind of thrown in with this mystery and she kind of meets this unknown demigod, or at least that's what she thinks, and they kind of begin to form this relationship. This again is a super fascinating tale. N.K. Jemisin makes the most harrowing and heartbreaking but uplifting stories full of hope. Like nothing comes easy within her stories, like there's always an exchange, an equivalent exchange. Like you're never gonna get a good thing without a bad thing, if you know what I mean. Her writing is lush and evocative and I just feel like she creates such fascinating fantasy stories. This particular trilogy I think is so cool. One of the things I love is that it's set within this godlike world, but we're following different characters within each book and kind of how those characters are impacted by kind of the dealings of gods, which I just think is super cool. All in all, I actually think I like this sequel more than the first one. I thought it was really fascinating. It provided a more of a vignette within this larger world where the first one was definitely broad strokes and more political, like larger political movements were happening. And it was also super entertaining, but this second one I felt like was a little more intimate and I really felt like I grew to love my main character so much. That being said, I gave the sequel within this trilogy a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So good, love N.K. Jemisin flying through through all of her books and she just released a new book which is so exciting. Next book I completed was Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This of course is the first book to the Last Hours trilogy which is a brand new series within the Shadowhunter world. This is set in the Victorian era in London and we follow a slew of characters from very well-known families. We got some Lightwoods, we got some Herondells, we got some Carsters and in fact we actually see a lot of our faves from our previous series as a lot of our main characters are the sons and daughters of a lot of people from the uh, Clockwork Angel trilogy, The Infernal Devices, which was great. This series, of course, had all the antics that you would expect from a Shadowhunters book. There's a lot of action and adventure, a lot of demons coming from unknown places, a lot of mystery to be solved, a lot of evil to be undone. But in full transparency, I read these books not for that. I read them because you fall in love with the characters so much and there's always some incredibly angsty romance at the center. And Cassandra Clare can just think of new and horrible ways to keep people apart and I am here for it every single step of the way. This book definitely had that and it was new and I loved it so much. I honestly just don't know how she keeps thinking of these painful ideas. But I actually think the sequel is going to be even better than this because if you read to the end there's a thing that happens and I was just like, wow. Yes, <laughs> cannot wait to be torn apart by this next book. All in all, I definitely found this to be a strong first novel within a new trilogy by Cassandra Clare. I really do think she gets better and better with each trilogy she writes, and I know a lot of people struggle with the first set of books within this world, and honestly at this point, if you can just read like the first book or two within the Shadowhunters original trilogy, skip the back half, you can just read the Infernal Devices, this, the Lady Midnight trilogy, because they're all so good and so entertaining. And this I really do feel like benefited from the Victorian setting. There's a lot of circumstance that kind of adds a different flavor to all of this, propriety and like expectations for men and women, and how that clashes with Shadowhunters society I thought was also very fascinating. All in all, great set of characters, 
great set of romances. Can't wait to see them all fall in love with each other in some capacity. I also really loved our main character and her relationship with her brother I found fascinating. It was great and it was so entertaining. I flew through it. Loved it. Can't wait for the next one. I would give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars as well. Next up, I completed my nonfiction audiobook for the month, and that was Red Notice by Bill Browder. This is a memoir and a true story of high finance, murder, and one man's fight for justice. This follows Bill Browder. Basically, he's recounting his rise of becoming the most successful Western investor in Russia and ultimately how his investment fund caused him to have hits out on him, be almost murdered, go to prison, all sorts of really wild things. And honestly, a lot of people recommended this book to me in like my real life, a lot of coworkers, and I was always pretty skeptical because I was like, it's about finance at the end of the day. How interesting can that be? But honestly, this was a wild ride. Clay's looking at me right now, very insulted. Um, but this was honestly a wild ride from not only like the peak where he's kind of being investigated and almost thrown in Russian prison, but honestly like, the pure creation of his fund right after the fall of the Soviet Union and him kind of navigating this rapid privatization within their economy it was super cool and obviously he's a specialist within this space so very knowledgeable. He's also kind of probably fluffing it up for the drama and I ate it right up. But all in all I would say this was super entertaining and a really in-depth and interesting look at the economy uh, in the 90s especially from an investment perspective. I didn't know a lot about this at all um, and I found it to be super cool. So I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars and definitely a worthwhile read, listen to the audiobook or you can run it from the library, which I did. This was really cool. I'm trying to get Clay to read this because I think he would also really like it because um, he does work in finance, but you know. That being said, I don't and I still liked it. <laughs> Next book I completed I wasn't actually planning to read this month and this is where I would say my TBR started to deviate from my original plan and that is Crescent City by Sarah J Maas, House of Earth and Blood. This is the first book to what I imagine will be a very long series and I'm sure I will eat them all up because they're gonna be so freaking entertaining. I won't lie, I didn't know anything about this before picking it up and it actually kind of threw me for a loop and I had to reread it initially. And I'll say the first 60 to 100 pages of this book, I did not like. Um, it's an urban fantasy story set in this really cool world called Crescent City and it's basically this magical city where a bunch of different types of fantastical creatures live. You have werewolves, you have witches, you have sprites, you have angels, you have shapeshifters, you have fae, like every type of fantastical creature lives within the city, interacts, there's a lot of politics, and it's kind of set obviously in an urban modern setting, but has a lot of fantastical twists thrown in there. You first pick up this book and what initially happened to me when I picked up this book, I didn't like it at all. I was like, I don't like the characters. I don't like this party scene. Like this feels too stereotypical urban fantasy for me, which is a genre in general I don't read a lot of. And initially I was like really put off by how the story was constructed. But then something kind of happens, which is 100% in the synopsis, but again, I didn't read the synopsis, uh, that really turns the story on its head and provides a really interesting backdrop. You'll find that the first 60 or so pages is really kind of like a prologue to the rest of the story and there's a time skip and when that time skip happens, the story becomes significantly more interesting, our main character becomes much more likable, and you really begin to understand like the emotional trauma she's kind of working through the rest of this book with that initial setup. But I would say if you pick this up and you hate it at first, keep reading because I really do feel like you'll fall in love. Because honestly, I was incredibly skeptical. I was ready to put this book down and declare it to be like not for me, but I ended up really liking it. And it honestly gets better and better as you go through. The plot is super fast paced. We follow our main character Bryce as she's basically doing an investigation to try to solve a bunch of murders within this city. And in doing this, she kind of has to navigate a bunch of different like power structures with the different magical creatures that exist here. She also has a murky past that you learn more about. And she does this with an angel sidekick who is obviously super hot. And then there's that back and forth as well. All in all, this had great mystery. I actually really loved the urban setting. I thought Crescent City as a location was so cool and fascinating. Clearly Sarah J Maas created a really rich, fantastic setting. It wasn't just like a replication of New York City with some magical flair added to it. It really felt like its own place, which I thought was really cool. The characters really grow on you. The romance is super entertaining. There's a lot of great will they, won't they, back and forth, hate to love, which is always entertaining. All in all, I thought this was a solid first book within this series and I'm definitely interested to see how this world 
world expands and the story continues to unfurl. I would give this a four out of five stars just because I did find the beginning to be very jarring and hard to get into and I also feel like there's a lot of info dumping because there is a lot going on and I just feel like everything is thrown at you at once which can be a little bit confusing but once you kind of get through that and kind of get to the heart of the story it becomes super fascinating and uh, I ultimately really liked it but it definitely was not a perfect book but at the end of the day it entertained me. I read this the last back half of this book I read it like one day. I could not put it down in the classic Sarah J Mass fashion. Next book I completed was actually an audiobook and that is Killers of the Flower Moon. This is another nonfiction story uh, that I read from the library and it is basically a fascinating and devastating tale of both how one single Native American tribe which essentially was given a plot of land by the government, they struck oil there and became the richest individuals in the world. And then shortly after this discovery, they began to be systematically murdered. Paralleling this tragic story, it also follows the creation of the FBI and basically the people brought in to try to solve this murder as basically local authorities were mucking it up and not really trying to solve it at all. This was to me a story that wasn't so much a mystery because when you're reading it, it honestly feels pretty obvious who did it, but more a expose on all of the corruption and the unbelievable like hardships these people were put through and the fact that like no one was doing anything to help them. In fact, they were going out of their way to make it more difficult to solve this very obvious murder and how much these groups of Osage Native Americans had to go through to ultimately find justice and just safety and basically how like the American government, both local and federal, just treated them terribly. Alongside that though, it was interesting to watch these FBI agents come in and basically finally unravel what was going on here. And ultimately kind of bring the proper parties to justice in some way, shape or form. At the end of the day, this nonfiction book was really interesting and I know they're working to turn it into a movie, which I think would be great. I would say if you're interested in picking it up, don't listen to the audiobook. I didn't necessarily love the narrators and they definitely kind of took me out of the story, but overall I found the writing and the pacing of this book to be really interesting and overall the story and material was just wild. It was definitely a story I had never even heard of. This and Devil in the White City is making me more interested in American history than I ever had been previously. There's just so many stories out there about all sorts of things that I just didn't know anything about, so I'm trying to become more aware of things that have happened in our American past, good and bad. Obviously this leans definitely more into the bad category, but overall this was a very fascinating and harrowing tale. I would give it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was good, but sometimes I couldn't totally get into the writing style and I definitely think the audiobook was a little detrimental in my experience reading this book overall. Next book I read this month was The Queen's Poisoner by Jeff Wheeler. This was actually a reread for me and the first book to the King Fountain series. I first read this book four years ago and I wanted to pick it back up because I remember liking it a lot and I honestly forgot everything about it and I wanted to read the rest of the series. This is essentially a very classic fantasy style novel. We're following our main character Owen who is an eight-year-old boy and at the beginning of this novel his father basically commits an act of treason and basically doesn't go and support the king in battle. Therefore Owen is sent to the king's castle as a political hostage essentially keeping his father from acting out and rebelling again with the threat of his son essentially dying. We follow Owen as he travels to this castle and becomes intertwined in all of the castle's going ons. He becomes closer with the king. There is a young girl that he befriends and essentially you're just watching Owen try to navigate this really scary political scenario and essentially try to like come into his own personal power. The strength of the story definitely is our main character Owen. He is absolutely adorable <laughs> and he's so smart. Jeff Wheeler I feel like is so great at writing a childhood perspective because he's not like talking down to the child. He really honors that Owen would have a unique viewpoint and really he's really capable of exploring and making his own opinions and you really see this kind of evolve through the story, which I really appreciated. That as well, all of the childhood companions are kind of in a similar fashion. I just feel like Jeff Wheeler has a lot of respect for the child's perspective, which I feel like really shines within the story overall. The plot was really interesting. It was fast moving, but again, like not necessarily super original. The magic is kind of cool in that people are fountain blessed and they are essentially very good at something, ranging from being exceptional at battle to baking bread. And throughout the series, it's kind of hinted that Owen himself might be in some capacity fountain blessed. 
I really liked this book. I thought it really set up this series in a great way. I'm excited to read the next books and see Owen kind of grow up and become more entangled within the politics within this world. I thought it was really great and I really found it to be an enjoyable read. It's not very long. It definitely didn't blow me away in its originality, but I also found the narrative style to be very warm and homey and I definitely flew through it. Um, so overall I'd give this the same rating I did when I first read it which was a four out of five stars. And the very last book I completed I read in less than 24 hours because I could not put it down, I'm addicted to it, and now I'm just gonna become a romance book channel. And that is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This was exactly what I wanted to read. It was so entertaining, laugh out loud funny, and just full of great steamy romance that was just so much fun. This basically follows our main character Annabelle who's basically seen as an overeducated country girl and spinster. Her father who was a professor and kind of a scholar trained her her whole life but then with his passing she kind of went into the ownership in a lot of ways of her very ignorant and conservative cousin. At the beginning of the story Annabelle wins an Oxford scholarship to be at the prestigious university but one of the stipulations of this scholarship is it's funded by it's funded by the Women's Suffrage Society so when she begins to attend the school she also has to help them uh, propel their political goals and in doing this she crosses paths with a very cold-hearted duke named the Duke of Montgomery. Because he's so politically influential the group kind of tasks her to try to get him to support their cause and kind of influence the rest of his very powerful friends. In doing this there's a lot of hubbubaloo that happens, lots of romance, lots of long stares occurring, and it was just so entertaining I could not put this down. It was just definitely like an enemies to lovers, rom-com sort of historical fiction book. I really loved that it had a lot of the like modern pillars of romance kind of set in a historical setting. This is not like a pure maiden story. This is definitely like a really fun modern romantic comedy set in the Victorian era with all of the really great pomp and circumstances of that. The balls, the dresses, the manor homes, the, the horses, the dark and romantic libraries, all of that, but it still had very much a modern twinge to it which I really appreciated. I could not put this down. I hope this is adapted into all of the movies because I would just watch it over and over again and it's definitely set me off on a bit of a rabbit hole of wanting to read more kind of light and fluffy romantic comedy uh, historical fiction novels. I will say this is definitely steamy. This is not a YA novel. This is definitely an adult romance book, um, but it was just such a great time. I was laughing, I was smiling, and obviously I couldn't put it down. Honestly, it was the perfect thing for me to read given everything that's going on, a lot of anxiety rolling around, so this was just like a great escape for me. And all in all, I'd give this like a 4 out of 5 stars, 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. I obviously don't have much romance to compare this to because I don't really read that, but hey, I'm gonna start so you know I'll let you know if this reading changes but I had so much fun and would highly recommend this book. Alrighty guys those are all of the books I read in the month of March. Let me know down below some books you've read recently as I would love to know and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!